the S badge. Seeing that on an Audi product gives way to eager enthusiasm and wide smiles for most merchants of stylish speed. It's typically attached to slippery sedans or wacko wagons. Does it also work on a crossover? Currently surrounded by Irvine, California. Just standard Southern California town. It's got close access to the beaches, surrounded by plenty of highways, and it's generally a nice place to live. Additionally, it's got that standard stereotypical Southern California stuff that you hear about if you don't live here. There are strip malls, there are nice cars, there's traffic. There's plenty of stuff for people who enjoy driving cars to dislike. It gets monotonous, it gets boring, but a car like this brand new Audi SQ5 kind of fits the bill around here. It's comfortable, it looks good, you can cram stuff in it, and it's a crossover, which is popular since people who buy cars don't buy wagons, unfortunately. Still, this does have an S badge. It also has these satin finished silver mirrors, which lets you know, if you're a fan of the Audi brand, that you should be in for something a bit more than your average point A to point B sedan. I mean, with an Audi, you're getting a luxury car, but nothing too exciting. Add the S though, and things change. Can it really change that much for a crossover though? To find out, we're gonna have to leave Irvine behind. Thankfully, some of the greatest roads on the planet happen to be within reasonable driving distance. I am gonna take this thing up to Mulholland. So we're dealing with something big and heavy. So that motor has to work pretty hard, but we've got 354 horsepower, so it is doing the job and it's getting that job done. Additionally, this thing isn't that big in the grand scheme of the SUV universe. However, here on Mulholland, it's huge, but thankfully it drives like it's a bit smaller. So, this has an S badge on it. Yes, it also says Q5, but it says SQ5. That means we have the Audi Drive Select. We pop this in dynamic. Suspension, throttle response, gearbox all come alive a little bit. However, since this is Mulholland, I popped it into manual mode. Get full control over what's going on with this vehicle. And it's kind of necessary on a road like this because this is an aggressive road and I'm dealing with motorcycles and aggressive vehicles and all kinds of stuff passing by tons of cars, tons of people standing around, and there's a lot of action to be had. And we're doing it in something a family would be taking their kids to soccer practice in. But we're having fun, so it's not that crazy. This is kind of impressive for what you're getting. Um, you know, it's an Audi compact crossover. It's big, it's heavy, with that all-wheel drive system and you know the leather seats and all the luxury that comes with this car, especially when it's fitted with the prestige package like this one is. So it tops out at about $64,000 compared to the $51,000 base price. But you're getting some bang for your buck here, which is you know hard to say in the luxury sports compact crossover market. I mean, is that really a segment? I guess it's becoming more and more of a segment. Porsche is about to launch the Macan, which by all accounts is the sports car of the group. But this might be the budget sports car of the luxury compact crossover market. And I feel stupid saying that. I'm gonna to be totally honest. I feel stupid saying that because deep in my heart, I wish this was an S4 wagon. We all do. I know you watching at home do. I wish it was an S4 wagon with a manual gearbox and tons of fun to be had. But we can't have that because the people who actually spend the money on these cars 
don't want that. We do, but we're a tiny subset, and as much as we do matter in the small scale of the automotive universe, it's the big scale that buys the cars. So should we be upset then that this is what we're left with? Initially, I thought the answer would be yes. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't think there would be much to love with this car. However, as I'm driving it, I've put it through the paces out on the highway. I've driven it on the road to and from just doing my daily errands. And today, here on Mulholland, it's more than holding its own. You know, it, I'm enjoying this car. You know you're dealing with a hefty car, but the steering is light enough that you can kind of toss it around the curves a little bit. You're not gonna be mistaken for a Boxster carving up the canyons, but you're also not gonna be devoid of the feeling of having lots of fun. And that's important with any Audi that wears an S badge on it, and this car is no exception. One of the best parts about the SQ5 is its ability to transform back into a luxury, comfortable, compact crossover. When I'm done here at Mulholland, it'd be fun to be in a sports car on the road, but the highway might get a little bit monotonous. The suspension will be bumpy, the exhaust might start to drone, and in general, I might start to get tired of it. I mean, really, I won't, but there's a chance that I will, and there's definitely the average person I think would. With this, though, none of that happens. You pop on your favorite song on the Bang & Olufsen audio system, you slip it into S or D, take your hands off the paddles unless you need to come down a gear for passing on the highway, and you put the suspension into comfort, and you glide home, and it's quiet in here, and it's nice, and the AC works perfectly. So there's plenty to enjoy on both sides of the fence with this car, and that's what Audi's good at. They make cars that are subtle sports machines unless you're dealing with you know the higher end S vehicles or the R8 or anything RS but in general these are machines that are suited to providing a subtle sporting experience while also giving you that level of luxury that an Audi buyer is looking for and the SQ5 kind of nails that balance nicely in a vehicle where you wouldn't expect it to do that it's a little aggressive in terms of hunting for fuel economy. In sport mode, it's a touch manic and holds gears even longer than you would think it would. My favorite mode is manual mode. If you're on the highway though, and you're just cruising along, you'll get by in the normal mode. That guy crossed the double yellow, he can kiss my ass. It's like an MG club, or excuse me, it's a Dotson Fairlady club, that's kind of cool. Hey look, it's a yellow. Um, that was Matt Farah, by the way, who is a production assistant on this episode of the Hooniverse, whatever the f it's called. Um, so back to the car. 